UN aid chief Martin Griffiths has said there are positive developments in talks to open the Kerem Shalom, Shalom border crossing in Israel to increase humanitarian aid into Gaza. But he's once again expressed grave concern about the ongoing attacks in Gaza, highlighting the lack of meaningful aid distribution. We do not have a humanitarian operation in southern Gaza that can be called by that name anymore. That the pace of the military assault in southern Gaza is a repeat of the assault in northern Gaza, that it has made no place safe for civilians in southern Gaza, which had been a cornerstone of the humanitarian plan to protect civilians and thus to provide aid to them. But without places of safety, that plan is in tatters. And so what we have at the moment in Gaza, northern Gaza, even more difficult, but in Gaza, where we have trucks still crossing daily through the Rafah crossing, is at best humanitarian opportunism to try to reach through some roads which are still accessible, which haven't been mined or destroyed, to some people who can be found where some food or some water or some other supply can be given. But it's a program of opportunism. It's erratic. It's undependable. And frankly, it's not sustainable. All right, let's go to Kristen Salumi there. She joins us live from the United Nations headquarters, despite the hope for resumption of aid, which we heard uh, from Martin Griffiths there through Karim Shalom. The, the ba basic question is, though, to what extent will the U.S. position formulate when it comes to those diplomatic moves going on where you are, Kristen, to try and, and get a more meaningful ceasefire in place? Well, I should point out that the World Food Program today is saying that uh, 87 to 93 percent of families in Gaza now don't have enough food to eat on a daily basis. That's their latest estimate. Uh, and given that and given the precarious situation that Martin Griffiths just described for aid getting into the area and actually getting to the people who need it uh, and the safety of aid workers there. With all of that as the backdrop, that is what prompted the U.N. Secretary General to again raise the issue of a humanitarian ceasefire and invoke the strongest tool he has in his toolbox to put it on the agenda of the Security Council. But the Security Council, uh, while it has been discussing a humanitarian ceasefire resolution, still seems unable to act. Uh, the United States uh, has been opposed to Council taking further action there. I asked the U.S. Deputy Ambassador earlier today if that position had changed, and this is what he said. Our position hasn't changed. Uh, we, again, think that the best thing to try to, that we can do, all of us, uh, for the situation on the ground is to let the quiet behind-the-scenes diplomacy that's ongoing continue. And that's, we think, the best hope for trying to improve the situation on the ground uh, with regard to humanitarian uh, relief, for getting hostages out, and for trying to move you know, forward on some, towards some kind of process. The Security Council is scheduled to meet on Friday. Uh, however, absent a resolution from the Council, the best hope at the United Nations now for getting more aid in is the opening of a second border crossing at Karem Shalom. And uh, there has been positive developments on that front, according to Martin Griffiths, the UN relief chief. Uh, however, the situation, he said, minus a ceasefire will remain very precarious for workers and for the civilians they're trying to help. All right. Thanks so much. Kristen Salumi.